Last July, during the AV test before a talk by Branislav Yakovlevich here at MoMA, this slide was flagged as a glitch. But it was there, just as it should be, a cluster of names of two conceptual art groups from the town of Novi Sad in Yugoslavia, one called Kod and the other the unpronounceable whatever it is set of signs, as Yakovlevich would call it in his lecture. A slide that was interpreted as technologically incommensurable was actually incommensurable in another way, representing an unrecognizable history of Yugoslav conceptual art and performance that up till now has not quite fit in with this institution's more dominant history of modern art, here made visible thanks to Yakovlevich. And I also think here of Omar Barada's comments yesterday about the delayed recognition of El Salahi uh, on the international scene and uh, Cecile Froman's comments earlier today about temporality and texture of time. Signs, of course, are also letters, language, innately readable by some and translatable to others. But as the example of the unpronounceable artist group in Novi Sad suggests, sometimes, even when using the signs of a given alphabet, sense is circumvented and there is no way through to direct translation. And what if we allowed that an A to B translation is not always attainable and, in fact, might be better left unattained? And I think Bashir's comments this morning about translation as displacement are really interesting to think about here. Recently, Emily Getty published a translation of a poem by the poet Mudan, this should be uh, all on the same line, with an accompanying commentary that proposed the productiveness in making space for both the Chinese character Wu of the title alongside the English personal pronoun I and then alighting all use of the pronoun in the poem, just as no further occurrence of wu appears in the original. And here too, it's interesting to think of Max Jorge Hinder Cruz's talk yesterday around bodies and, use, and the way personal pronouns function. In the poem's title, Gedi's liter Gedi literally carves out a space for the incommensurable, situated between Mudan's wu and, in her, and her I, in order to ask, quote, what knowledge is generated by putting languages in relation to one another? What can be gained through a greater attention to the process rather than the product of translation? These are powerful questions, and yet, at this very moment, it is a product-oriented discourse of translation that has become so embedded in what Jacques Lesra calls, quote, the age of global re reproducibility, in which the university becomes a conforming, converting, translating machine industrial, industry relevant. Such a critique of the neoliberal university could also be applied to the neoliberal art museum and its rhetoric of expanding the canon. <laughs> Zdenka Badovinats, whom we heard from on Friday, imagines instead a museum not universal nor global, but on a third track, the sustainable museum that, quote, does not require constant expansion or the perpetual acquisition of more and more objects, end quote. What might that sustainable museum or university look like? Could it better represent a plurality of vocabularies and modes of being in the world not currently translatable on the stage of the global contemporary? To zoom back to the task of the translator, Getty underscores the obvious fact in her translation that her I is not Mudan's Wu. In her words, quote, not to necessarily, not to unnecessarily, foreignize or differentiate, but because it is the space between wu and I that translation teaches us. And if we pretend the translation can replace the original or some parts of the original, we lose the ability to listen to the echoes that relational space creates." End quote. Indeed, to insist on a right to difference, to opacity, to untranslatability or the incommensurable is not to suggest that we cannot come into conversation, but rather that we need to do the work of being better listeners. To return to privileging process over a tidy finished product, the desire for which risks foreclosing active dialogue. As the author and translator, John Keane writes in advocating for an increase in the number of translations of literary works by black diasporic authors, quote, the more voices we open our ears to read and hear, acknowledging that the bridges we construct through translation will not be foolproof, 
the less likely we are to misunderstand and thus erase or, erase or elide particularities and specificities, and the more likely we are to see connections and commonalities at the same time." End quote. Here too, Keen emphasizes the relational aspect in the work of creating and reading translation, not the inherent value of the product as commodity. And finally, with uh, Cecile and Anu's remarks earlier, I think we also have the, in this idea of the space of correlation, an interesting embodiment of this as these places of contact that also render borders and difference. What Keene aspires towards is what I hope will be enacted in some small way in this forum, through the coming four presentations and the conversation to follow. Each of the presenters will approach the question of the incommensurable from their specific area of knowledge, offering contemporary and historical examples that describe particular preoccupations while gesturing towards broader issues that might offer up points of comparison. Natalia Brisuela will open the conversation with a discussion of three indigenous productions, both visual and textual, and their relation to traditional art spaces, <laughs> followed by a presentation by Victoria Callas Butelezzi of the potential untranslatability of blackness across languages. Tumea Junghaus will then describe a decolonial approach to the archive with regards to Roma art production and representation, and Harsha Ram will discuss the work uh, of Georgian painter Nico Pirosmani as a case study to d explore translations of aesthetic value between the primitive and the national. From there, the speakers will come into conversation and we'll open it up the to the floor to you for question and answer. And now I'll turn it over to Natalia.